Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Garbage Heart Out of the Can Haunt Review for 2016 with a surprise haunt review. Surprise! She's laughing because I got it right this time. I know. This is you all don't like the know. fifth recording, so. You don't want to know what the problems we've had with this review. <laughs> But yes, it's a surprise review, as in we're surprised we're doing this review. We are. So you should be too. Yes. Ipso facto, some kind of law. Uh, but yeah. yes, we are going, we we did Terror on the Coast in right. Gulfport, Mississippi. We a did. A haunt we literally learned about two hours before we went. We did. So this is, yeah. we were totally surprised by this. True story. Yeah. We, uh, Saturday night in haunt season, we didn't have a haunt. Not a thing. What were you going to do? I don't know. We searched on Google. We searched everywhere. We tried to find a haunt that we could go to easily within our range right. and not totally screw up our schedule. Right. And we didn't find anything. But then, for some weird reason, I searched on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And then I found Terror on the Coast. Yes. The haunt we are covering today. And we went. It was in Gulfport, Mississippi. About got an hour. Got a few people together. Yeah. Got, a, got a, another couple from the haunt that we run together. And we went to check it out. And... Um, so where are we going to start this review? <laughs> well, A, it's an hour and a half away. A, an hour and a half so ish away, yes. It seemed like good times. Yes. Um, it seemed like we'd be able to get there and get back and get back to work. At a reasonable time. Um, and we left here at about 7.30. We arrived at a little bit after 9. Right. We didn't make a stop on the way. So. Stop on the way, so yeah. We, Boring we, stuff, I know. Got drinks, I know. Yeah. But yeah, it... <laughs> Well, let's do the elephant in the room, because it's kind of what I know is lingering over both of our heads right, right. now. The line. Yes. It was a bit long. The immovable. An immovable, incredulous Slow. line. <laughs> yes. Um, long story short, when we got there, they were at about like 75% of what their queue capacity could hold. So they were not right. full, but not mm -mm. shallow either. Right. We spent about 100 minutes in line, about an hour and 40 minutes. Right. An hour and 40 minutes is easier, but yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. And it didn't, like, like you said, it, it, the worst part was it didn't feel like it was moving. Right. Like yeah. we would spend long stretches of time not doing anything and not moving. And not understanding why it wasn't moving. Yeah, it was very, very bizarre. We understood better when we got to the front why it wasn't moving. Well, yeah. But we'll get there in a minute, I know. Yeah, and one of the things that we thought was, oh, well, maybe the haunt is so big, maybe it really yeah. is. What they advertise. Yeah, which is uh, 86,000 square feet. You watch their promo video. It says we are 86,000 square feet. And I'm very sure the building is. Yes, it was very exciting to hear yeah. of an haunt yeah, yeah. that big. That big, that close to us. It was like discovering Atlantis. It right. was huge. This yeah. was big news for me. I couldn't wait to go. I was like... So yes. excited. It was actually kind of comical. Yeah. Poor Ellie was laughing at me pretty hard how happy I was. Yeah. But yeah, I couldn't wait to go. And then we get there, and like I said, the line was moving very, very slow. So as you said, the anticipation builds, the expectation builds. Right. So let's talk a little bit about the line yeah. area. There's so a first, lot to unpack here. Yeah. The ticket booth. All right, ticket booth. No idea what the ticket prices were. Now, we did read on their <laughs> Facebook page, because they do not right. have a website. We learned on the Facebook page that the tickets were $17 each. Fine. We were prepared. Um, our friend Chris called to find out they accepted credit cards. Right. So we were prepared. Yeah. We got charged $15 each. Right. So that's a happy surprise. Yeah. But there was no signage indicating the prices. Right. So, not that, that we could see, anyway. Not, not yeah. that it was obvious. Not that it was obvious. And it was even worse because... They also had merch there. Which I didn't see at all. You didn't even see the no. merch. And I saw the merch, but I was like, oh, there's a t-shirt. Yeah. But I, I had no idea what the prices were. I had no idea what sizes, what variants were offered. There's no signage there to indicate these things. Right. So, okay, that part's done. Yeah. We're going toward the line. Right. And to go to the line, you go past the concession area and several photo ops. Right. This is like a very, very open area. Yes. Um, a very, like, free roam area. But it was kind of difficult to understand what you were doing in a way yeah because they had lots of signs right but you know you wander into it and it's like is this a photo op is this the photo op? right you know what i mean yeah they had several different photo ops um also that's where the porta potties that weren't horrible like the one outside yeah, the, um, was, yeah okay when uh, this is a good yeah. point when you arrive there's a porta potty pretty much greeting you outside right don't do it 
Yeah. For the love of God, no. don't do it. No, go to the ones inside. It's, they're, it's much better. They're, they're much yes. better. Yes. Um, um, <laughs> yeah. Mistakes were made by me. Yes. <laughs> um, anyways, but yeah, so you go through that area. And that's mm-hmm. where we did our little preview thing that you probably saw by now. Right. And then we got into the line, and it's like I said, the line itself was just a straight zigzag cattle gate system. Right. That felt really, really slow. There was about, according to Chris, who, if I'm going to trust anyone to count a block of people in line, yeah, it'd be Chris. Yeah, he said there were about 250 people. I think yeah. like 240 and some change. I, yeah. I wasn't really paying much attention at that point. Yeah, <laughs> but he said 240 and some change. I'm going to say 250. Yeah, that's um, fair. That's fair. And it took us an hour and 40 minutes to go from that point to the front of the line. Right. And that was really, really frustrating. Made worse by the fact. That they were pulling people from behind us. Yeah, when we got to the front of the line, we learned that if you did not have a group of six or seven, yeah, they would go further back in the line to find a group of two or three to put with the one in the front. Yeah. So that they had their maximum amount of people they could put through at a time. Yeah, and they were going to fill that maximum every time, even if it meant holding up the line to let the next group go in. Right, and by the time we got there, since they had, we were, they were pretty close to closing the ticket box by the time we yeah, got the, to the Yeah, the front. ticket booth is supposed to close at 11, we were at the front of the line by about 10.40. Yeah, and we had gotten there at 9. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, by that point, they were pulling people from the back of the line who had just showed up. Yeah, and that was and really frustrating. Frustrating is not the word. <laughs> Fair enough. That is not the word. I was livid when I went in. Yeah, that that was really yeah. really rough, and it's so it's 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 one of the situations where the line could be very trivially made so much better. Right. Uh, item one, fans. Yeah. Oh yes, please, please get that air circulating. It is hot. In we there. had Chris Holy pull out his phone. He had one of those Android phones with a thermometer. Yeah. He actually downloaded an app to take the yeah. Android temperature. It was just shy of eighty-one degrees. Right. The temperature outside was about five degrees cooler. Yeah. At the time. Yeah. And so in this stale air. This is where one of those huge ass, huge ass fans dot com would yeah. <laughs> be a big difference in the area. Yeah. Get some air circulating, get something going. Right. Most of that time, there's just still stagnant air. Yes. Item number two. Yes. Take all those photo ops and move them into the line. Sprinkle them like crack for the line. Yes. So that people have stuff to do while they're waiting, yes. other than watch the stage. There show. were tons of people taking selfies. Oh, yeah. I photobombed so many people on that <laughs> line. Actually, I think I photobombed the same six people like a dozen times. Yeah, but, <laughs> that's but, fair enough. Regardless, there were people taking selfies. Give them a place to do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, third thing, actors. They yeah. had two line actors, and they were working hard. These guys were busting okay. ass. So the clown was not busting. Much he was relying on clown. All right, fair but enough. But the doctor character was working his ass off. He was, and from our you know sexism and haunting look, um, this is the first haunt I've been to where they had a shirtless, fairly attractive male in a line. Yeah, male eye candy. I yeah. remember that. It was interesting. Yeah, it was, it was actually um, kind of was, to see that. Yeah, it was pretty funny because some of the ladies towards the end of the line were saying, hey, dead hottie, come over here. And I'm like, oh my oh, God, God, really? <laughs> you're, you're just making the yeah. point of why you don't mix these two things. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, but yes, what I would do there is they were struggling when the line was at its most dense and right. the line was full. They could not penetrate the center of the line. Right. And these were actors that we did not see in the actual no, haunt. They, all so they were line. exactly. They were only line actors who could not get to the line. Yeah, think about that. And there's a, and what you, they should have done. I, what I would have done is carve these paths into the center that actor only runs, mm-hmm. so they could interact with the line as it's full. Right, because it, it is big enough space. Oh yeah, they have plenty of room. They could do that. Yeah. Yes. And it'd be very very trivial to do. So that would really allow them to interact and engage and really make those memories for people in line. Because right. that's just it. One of the reasons the line felt so long was there's not much to do and it didn't move regularly. Right. And there was a stage show going yes, on. Yes, there was. And I will say this. They did the stage show thing right. Yes. Very right. Yes. Because it was for entertainment. Yes. It was not a, we stop the line and you watch a show. Yeah. It was going on while the line was moving. Yeah, you go to like the House of Shock, it's like, okay, the stage show's on, line's not moving, nobody's going to the haunt. Right. Here, the line kept moving while the stage show was on, and that was a big, big improvement right there. Right. And the stage show was basically a couple of aerialists slash fire eaters, they had like circus performers, right. 
out there, plus one guy that was a human hardhead and a, mu- and a singer. Yes, yes, he would sing while being beaten up, beaten which, up. Was, which was pretty cool. Unfortunately, um, <laughs> it was very difficult to see the act at times. It was difficult to see, but I did like that that performing troupe, which it seemed like they might have a different performing troupe each weekend. Yeah, maybe. I, um, I don't know that part. Yeah, I'm not sure on that. But they did change up the act each time they performed. Yes, they did. So you did we, not we see saw the it exact twice, same show. It was show. not the exact same show. Yes. We saw it twice. It wasn't the exact same show. But they had this weird laser effect yeah. on the stage, which made it impossible to see a lot of the act. Yeah, the really uh, big star show thing that was out last year. Yeah, I think year. it's actually like a Home Depot. Yeah, it was the little green dots everywhere. Yeah, you know? and yeah, it, it looked cool when nothing was on the stage. Right. But when people are trying to perform, it's hiding what they're doing. It's hiding the motion and the movement. Right. Which is so, kind of what it's designed to do. <laughs> so I think that covers the line and yes. the outside right. there. So, so when we get to our group, yes, we get to go up. They tell us the rules. The yes. rules were not posted anywhere. Yeah, this is a time for another banner. I'm just yes. going to say that one straight up. Yes, because that would cut down on the weight. Yeah, and then a guy has to come and take you from the area where the line ends right. to the doors of the hall, which is, yes. it felt like it was in another zip code, honestly, yes. but it was legitimately probably 300 feet or right. 300 or 400 feet. Yeah. Um. There were a few scare actors in that area. They, um, but it's easy to miss them if you're not really paying attention. Yeah, them. they were they were dressed darkly. It was dark area. There wasn't there weren't built out sets in that area. Yeah, there were a few props, yeah, they but had, not built out. And sets. they had a whole Wild West thing in that outside area, right? Which actually was very well done. The facades were very very well done in this area. Yes, um, this was the most built thing in the haunt, as we're going to discuss. Right. Um, and you get to the doors, and they have these huge, like, 30-foot, 40-foot doors. Mm-hmm. They're mammoth doors, and they look awesome. Right. They are awesome. And they do this whole little um, scene-type thing. Yeah. Where they're letting in, like, some kind of, like, the Wizard of Oz thing, knocking on the door and getting right. let in. It's very similar to that. And the, the thing is, it's very cool. I do love those doors. But I'm like, oh, this is why the throughput was struggling. I don't think that's the only reason. But it's one it, of the key reasons. It's, it's, it's one, one of the reasons, yes. Yeah, I'll agree with you. And it's at not the, the time only reason. that the doors, we got to the doors, I was still living. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and at that point we go in. Yes. And the very first actor at least changed the mood a little bit. He, he gets yeah. a point. He gets points. He gets a lot of points. He, he was, was good. He was the highlight yeah. of, of the haunt for me. I don't want to spoil his routine. No. I am not spoiling anything. He was just a highlight. He was able to change my mood from one of livid about the line to able to actually review this haunt. And, and yeah, really think about it. Because I, you were writing your tirade about this haunt in that line. Oh, I know. Don't lie. <laughs> well, no. When they were pulling people behind us that had just <laughs> gotten there and we'd been there for almost two hours, of course I was writing a tirade. But, yes, yeah. but yeah, that actor was really, really good, really amazing. It was great placement and positioning, great use of him. He yep. was wonderful. He lets you into the main haunt. And it's a very interesting haunt once you actually get inside. Right. Um, and one of the things I found very fascinating was we talk a lot on this pod, um, about our podcast and here about prop-based layout. Right. And about how you use props to navigate people around and extend mm-hmm. walkways and all that stuff. This haunt was almost entirely designed and built with a prop-based layout. Yeah. Which was cool. It gave me a lot to look at. It sounds like it should really suck because they made almost no effort to hide the fact they were in a warehouse. Right. Made almost no effort. No. Nope. And it felt like you were wondering there was some guy's giant warehouse collection of cool stuff and there happened to be actors there. Right. This sounds like it should totally stink. Yeah. But it actually was really interesting and really unique. And You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. In fact, the stuff at eye level and around me was so interesting that I barely looked up. Yeah. And, you know, there were a few times that I could forget that I was in a warehouse. And they advertise very heavily that they have really cool props from all these... All these different things like American Horror Story. Right. I don't. I don't know much about what this. I didn't. Were. I didn't recognize any of the movie props that they said. But um, I'm sure they were there. I'm sure I, they were there. I'm sure they were. I love their bird cages. Yes, they had a lot of cool stuff, and you know they they advertise heavily. They have great props. They did have a lot of great props. Um, the issue with the haunt itself to me is twofold. Is first, like I said, they pumped us up with this eighty-six thousand square feet thing. Right. 
And the haunt itself, I'm just going to shoot here in the dark. I heard someone mention it was about 14,000 square feet haunt yeah. space. That sounds closer to accurate. Right, because it was 13 to 14 minutes to go. Yeah, I, I ran my timer as I usually do. Um, I had a finagling problem starting it because I didn't realize that the stuff before the door was part of the haunt. Right. So my timer read 12 minutes, 30 seconds. Right. But, you know, give them a minute, minute and a half. So 13 and a half to 14 minutes, I think, yeah. is the accurate time. But that comes after an hour and 40 minute wait in line. Yes. And our group was moving fairly slow. Yeah, we were because moving. Because we were with a uh, family, and the mom was terrified. terrified. She actually hit the floor four times. Left the bodies at the floor. <laughs> exactly. Which was great because that, that showed that the actors that were targeting her had great timing. Yeah, there were several, like I said, there were some actors in there, especially in the beginning and the end, yes. who were great. Yes, yes. The first guy, the carnival guy, they kept in character. You yeah. could tell that they had acting experience. Um, and the guys at the end had their, their timing down too. And it was, and they were working together. But then you had a, a section in the middle right. where, A, it felt like there were a lot of rooms, and this is something from Alice and one of the members of our group knows, right. where it felt like there were a lot of rooms that had one person that needed three. Right. And a lot of rooms that had three people that could have gotten by with one. And a lot of the actors seemed to be just doing the, you know, mm. grr. Grr. And I don't know if it was because we were unintentionally there late at night. Right. Or what. I mean, but, we got there early enough that we should have been able to get there through it before anybody left. Yeah, like I said, we arrived a little bit after 9 p.m. Yeah. And they were supposedly open 7 to 11. We arrived almost exactly at the midpoint of the night. Yeah. And ended up not going through it until the very end. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. But yeah, there were a lot of actors that did not seem to have that in the middle. Right. But like I said, beginning and the end, actors were very, very solid. Yes. And like I said, the weirdest part was when it was over... We kept wondering if it was actually over. Well, yeah. Well, see, you you had struck up a conversation with the family. Yeah. And we're getting their feedback and uh, talking to them. Talking to them. Mm -hmm. And Chris and I from our group were hanging back because you had to walk down this long path back to the parking lot. Yeah. And there were buildings everywhere. Yeah, this is and like I'm a like, compound of some sort. Chainsaw guy. Gonna no. get buzzed. No. No, here. Is he it's not there no. either? Please, chainsaw guy at the last building. Something. And I'm not usually one to ask for a chainsaw yeah. guy, but this would have been perfect. Yeah, I don't think you asking for a chainsaw guy has ever happened. No, but everybody was relaxed and laughing and talking, and it would have been perfect because you would have had people running from your haunt to their cars, and people coming in would have seen that. Yeah, and the exit funneled pretty much straight to the parking lot. Right. Not back to the front. So if you wanted merch... And all that. You had to get at the ticket booth before you went in. Right. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't know that that was the case. Yeah, I didn't know that was the case. And I didn't feel like carrying a t-shirt through the haunt. No, and people who know that they get really scared are not going to want to yeah. carry it either. Exactly. They're going to be afraid of losing it. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're going to go, ah, and, and just, it goes away. They become a human t-shirt cannon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've actually seen that type of thing happen. I know. But, yeah, so... This haunt to me is kind of weird because I felt like they got a lot of the hard stuff right, right, and a lot of the easy stuff was off. Like another thing that was right. easy, going back to the line. I hate to go back to the line. They had concessions. Yes. Really good concessions. Yes. I really liked their concession. They even sold pickles. Oh. They almost got a pickle. Huh. <laughs> they had, they had pickles, but they had good concessions. No trash cans. Yeah. So people were leaving cups and cans and things in the little buckets that the um the the held, cattle, no the cattle the the the, 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 the chain for the cattle the gates the poles for the gates yeah. yeah it was weird yeah it, yeah it, it yeah and this is um their second year I don't know if we mentioned that in this take but it is this is their second um, year yeah and so some of that stuff maybe should have been figured out a it, little uh, bit at least the trash cans yeah. Because if you notice that people are leaving stuff in yeah. your line area, and just put a trash can in yeah, there. Yeah, and, and just to give an example, we have a, a short line here. Yeah. We have four trash cans. Yeah. yeah. We overload on trash cans to, to avoid the littering problem. Right. And we don't even have concessions. We're a free haunt. Yeah. Yeah, so it's one of those things where it's like, you know, there should have been trash cans. Right. And... I don't know. I, I think these guys have a lot of potential. I see a lot of creativity. I see a lot of spark. It's just some of the technicality, some of the technical stuff right. seems to not be there with them. Right. 
And so, I mean, I don't know. As far as going next year, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to have to sort of listen to, hey, see what our schedule is like. Right. But this year, we're, we're, like, on time with our stuff, and that's never happened at this point, like, ever. Yeah, like, 17th, we're recording this on the 16th. On the 17th yeah. last year, we were still framing stuff. Yeah, we were framing out walls. And now, we've just got a couple of things to do, so I don't want to get, you know, cocky or anything, but it did allow me to actually go and enjoy a haunt. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, this is a, I think there's a lot of potential here. I want to see good things for this right. haunt. It, it's just they've got to sort out some of these throughput issues. Yeah. Because their line was longer and took more time than the House of Shock. Right. You know, they did not have the stage show for stopping it. Right. And they had fewer people. Yes. So there's a clear throughput issue here that needs to be looked at. They have um, some other simple things I think they could fix and really nail down this haunt and come back next year. Right. Or even later this season if they make changes now. Right. And do some amazing stuff. Yeah. So I, I see a lot of potential here. I'm very yeah. hopeful these guys can you know learn and build upon their experiences this year. Right. I completely agree. Okay. Is that all? Um, well, on one final note, uh, this is my favorite Mississippi haunt that yes. I've been to. I will say that. Yeah, Southern, we've only been to haunts in southern Mississippi. Yes, we've been to three. I don't think we've been anything um, north of Jackson. No, but this was, out of the three, this was the best one. I, I'll agree with that. It it, it, it it felt very safe. Yeah. It was very relaxed as a walkthrough, and it was it had some really good scares in terms of actors and timing and so forth. Right, and some really good stuff to look at. So, there so you go. yeah, it was, it was definitely an interesting experience, and if you're in the southern part of Mississippi looking for a Mississippi area haunt... Yep. I think this is our choice right now. Yeah, exactly. So is that it? Just be prepared for the line. Yeah, be. I would advise go early and go on an off day if at all possible. Either early or late. Or very late, yeah. Yeah, like 10.40. Uh, show up at about 10.30-ish. <laughs> yeah. I would say 10.30. Yeah. That would be a pretty good time. Is that it? That's it. All right, double checking now. All right. On that note, everyone, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this was Garbage Heart Out of the Can Haunt Review 2016. For Terror on the Coast in Gulfport, Mississippi, we will see you guys next time.